Hi, tonight I want to deviate a little bit from telling my story, uh, which could last and take forever, and just jump right in to some of the information that I want to share before announcing the predictive prophecy vision that I saw. I am going to read a essay tonight that I wrote um, many, a couple of years ago at least, and it is about predict predicting Hurricane Katrina about a month and a half before it actually transpired. It's, the essay is called Seeing Hurricane Katrina at the LA Cafe, August 2005. I understand how very presumptuous it is to claim one predicted Hurricane Katrina. Skepticism should be the response. It would be mine, and though I am an oracle, I am quite tired of celebrity mediums contacting the spirit of Marilyn Monroe and John Lennon on television when no one in their families requested this, and I am even more tired of this the psychic prediction fest televised every year ad infinitum. I will never be a part of this circle. Still, I must share the story of predicting Hurricane Katrina because I have seen a calamitous vision for 2010. It is massive, exodus shaping in its size and scope. It happens within the confines of the U.S. border and is particularly instigated by our own secret government and their technologies. Their hands are at work, but ours, of course, are more mighty. In the spring and summer of 2005, I read on five different occasions at the L.A. Cafe in Waterford, Michigan. The Katrina's vision was delivered on the last of the five nights. My first reading of the evening was for a blonde woman in her late 60s. I would later see that she was a resident of the most western tip of the Florida panhandle. She walked up to the empty chair at my reading table, snidely said, Honey, I've been giving readings for 20 years. Let's see what you can do. Proving myself isn't something I even consider, though it annoys me, so I just got started. Her reading began with a vivid image of her, car of her tar-caked, mucus-filled lungs. Two specific methods to help break up the congestion and cleanse her lungs were offered. I am always specific when giving these recommendations because I never hear the same remedies twice and these celestial prescriptions are usually cheap, effective techniques for independent healing outside of what your physician might say. She was uninterested and interrupted me. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any lung problem. Let's move on. She coughed nearly uncontrollably after making this statement and loudly enough to be distracting. She was oblivious, oblivious to her insincerity and belched out another cough before saying, Listen, I came here to hear about my love life. What do you have to say about that? I switch gears when needed, but it never means I turn away from what must be said. There is no choice there. This is what will keep coming no matter what the client's attitude is or what they ask for. Still, I requested a shift in her reading. I offered her detailed information about one particular man, the man she had dated on and off for the past five years. This whole realm of conversation was frivolous and pointless in the space where I dwelt, but clearly not to her, and she kept asking questions, though I confirmed him as an alcoholic who left her for broke. Love is blind. While talking about the man, I saw her trailer in the left-hand corner. It was unstable from weak supports, bad hinges, and unsecured siding. I described her property, what it faced, its directional orientation, colors, and everything that I saw. The vision was oddly intense, gaining in strength, with a huge swell of force within it. But she interrupted me again. Listen. You're not answering the questions I came here for. At that point, the vision was so intense, I couldn't even hear her voice. Still, her frustration was palpable. Rhetorically, I said to God and my soul, please just give me the last of the words for the night for her. 
then get her out of here, please. The vision intensified, and by then I knew it was a hurricane barreling through the Gulf of Mexico, getting ready to blast her trailer. I kept saying, look at the left-hand side of your trailer, get it fixed, deal with it, and pay attention to all the storm reports in the next two months. And I'm not joking. Do this if you want to have a place to live in the fall. Listen, I'm not getting ready for any hurricane. We're used to them, she spat back. I was sick of her indifference and bullying, quite frankly, and so I said internally once again, please make things crystal clear and totally take over because I am done with her. A huge big black cat filled my entire field of vision. The cat was ominous and its hair stood on end just like a Halloween feline arching its back in menacing form. I knew predicting a hurricane in the Florida Panhandle was the equivalent of noting excess rainfall in the Pacific Northwest, and so I internally said, what's the name of the storm? Please give me the name of the storm. K-A-T was spelled out in huge blinking red lights. K-A-T, K-A-T, I kept telling her, the storm is named K-A-T and it's cat something, but with a K. She started to stand, but needed to cough some more before grabbing her purse and pushing her chair back. She coughed and hacked the entire reading and cared not one bit about her dying lungs. She said no goodbye and went to meet her girlfriend at their cafe table, signaling a visible thumbs down to the friend. And so the girlfriend sat down, clearly bummed, that she had likely paid for what would be a bad coffee shop reading. Honestly, I thought nothing more of that image and read for the 12 additional people who made appointments that night. I went home and slept deeply, as I always do after marathon stretches of reading. I have only the faintest recall of reading details, and I prefer this just as my accountant likely prefers to forget my tax deductions. A month later, Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans and its residents. I watched horrified, completely outraged that Americans were being left for dead by an incompetent, unprepared, callous, ridiculous government. I didn't remember the vision from the coffee house until two months later. The image of the black cat reappeared as I was driving to the grocery store one day. The entire memory flooded me in reverse and hit me so hard I pulled the car off the side of the road to sit and cry for a very long time. In a hundred small ways, I know what it means that I saw a glimpse of Hurricane Katrina. There is no bravado in this hit. The human misery is more staggering than the interface that showed up in my mind that night. Oracles might see the future, and we may deliver messages but predictions are less valuable than understanding the matrix of delusion and evil enveloping this world at this time. This is what I truly care about. Even if I had seen the cat, the letters, and the chaos, governmental indifference that ensued, screaming this from the highest rooftop wouldn't have mattered. Who would have listened to another witch? Sometimes I see beautiful things that come to pass. Sometimes I see death, which I leave generally unspoken. More often than not, I just feel the weight of our collective hearts beating strongly as we wait for the world to change.